Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leathercraft, and this is The Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a leather element, drop it in the comment box below. We're going to talk about the Cub, hand-operated sewing machine, and this is a great piece of equipment. Now, if you're new to leather, or new to sewing, sewing can absolutely be intimidating. I fully agree. Not right here. You'll be amazed at how easy this is to sew with, and how easy it is to maintain. Now, if you're a pro, Easy to sew, easy to maintain, and absolutely durable. Now we're going to step over to my shop. I mount this on my work table. But for us crafters, here's the big point. This is going to come mounted on a piece of board for shipping. But it's actually a big help to us. Because in our shop, we never have as much room as we want. So what we can do is we can use a C-clamp. Clamp this to our workspace. Sew, unclamp, tuck it back. We have our original workspace. But for our pros, this is going to bolt right onto our work table. Cylinder arm. Big help. All right, let's step over to my shop. Look at all the details. When we get our box from Weaver, we're probably going to be surprised at the extras. I was. Really no need. We're Weaver. We're going to take care of you. You're going to get two spools of thread, extra nuts and bolts for mounting, one of my favorites. Good pair of nippers. We'll get two bobbins, one empty, one on the machine. Right here, we've got a post. So we can wind our bobbins on a hand drill. We're going to look at that. A good set of Allen wrenches. Cool point here. We've got slots on the machine to seat these. We're not going to lose any. Right there, big help. Extra pack of needles. We've got an excellent owner's manual. Good pictures, easy descriptions, and a nice thread stand. We can actually screw this onto our work surface. On our machine, let's thread this. This is an easy machine to thread because it all makes perfect sense. So let's start right here. We're going to come inbound from our thread stand. We've got two eye holes, one on either side of our top thread tensioner. So let's come inbound through this first hole, circle our tensioner, and outbound through the second. Now let's pull that taut so our thread drops down between our two tension plates. Line drive shot from there right to our top thread eyelet. From there, this is our needle bar. This literally goes straight to our needle. We've got a hole at the top. Let's come through that. Now, this is our side plate. We can take this off to add oil or grease to our machine. We've got a small hole right at the top. So let's exit out from that hole. We've got a check spring. We're going to run through that. Now we've got a lower and an upper thread guide. So let's go through the lower first, upper second, and again, Line drive shot straight to our needle. Right at the top of our needle, or at the bottom of our needle bar, we've got a thread guide. We're going to run through that. Now, on our needle, we're going to load our thread from the outside in. Now, if you're new to sewing, our needles, when you're going to replace or change out a needle, this needle has a groove or a channel down one side. We want that channel outside, which makes, again, perfect sense because our thread Technically, it's going to run down that channel. Right here is our foot release. Okay, easy enough to thread. I'm going to take this off of the board, mount this onto our table. Let's do some sewing. When we mount our cup, we can certainly mount this to where our cylinder arm hangs off of our table. Depends on your work. I've got holes set for both. This is going to be a little easier for the camera to see. Now, the two biggest points here, and if you take nothing else away from this video, take this. When we're sewing, we don't want to push or pull our material. That's going to affect our timing and very likely break or bend our needle. Second point, on our flywheel, we want to go clockwise, the top over forward. If we go backwards here, again, that could affect our timing. So let's drop in a stitch line, see what this looks like. And how easy is that? In fact, the flywheel requires very little pressure. And look at that. Very clean, beautiful stitch. Now, two points. First off, very conveniently, we've got a thread cutter right here. I tend to just be used to picking up the nippers. Secondly, this knob, this is our stitch length. So if we go clockwise, that's a longer stitch, counterclockwise, shorter stitch. So let's do this now. Let's do a back stitch.
Now with this, I want to go about four stitches. Entirely your call. Now on our fourth, on my downstroke, just as that foot starts to lift up, I want to keep my needle in my work and we're simply going to turn the work on the needle. And let's do one more and on our down, there's our foot starting to lift up. Let's turn our work. And it's the same thing if we're going to go to a square corner. We want to leave our needle in our material as we turn. Nice back stitch. Let's get this out of the machine. There we go. Nice back stitch. We can trim that off and that's going to look good. All right, let's look at our bobbin and how to wind that. All we need is a hand drill or a drill press. Both will work fine. So we've got our attachment, comes with our cub and our bobbin, simply going to slide on. But before we do that, let's come in from our thread stand. I'm going to drop my thread right through the middle. There we go. Now on this end, actually both ends, we've got a small catch right there. So let's drop our thread in that and slide that on our bobbin. Good, that's going to hold us tight. Now what we're going to do is we're going to wind this. Let's get two, two around. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of tension, a little bit, because this is a spun thread. But watch how easy this loads. How about that? So I'm going to fill up this spool and then we'll insert this into our cub. And our bobbin is spun. Well, that's easy enough. Let's clip that, uh, tuck that in. Good. Bring this off. Bring this piece from our center. Let's clip that and we are ready to sew. Let's drop this into our machine. And a good close up of our bobbin, just what we need. So here's our bobbin case. Now, there's a little lever right here. All I have to do is pull that towards me and the bobbin case is going to angle out. It's not going to separate from the machine. But before we pull this out, notice my thread is coming out of this hole right in the middle of the bobbin and it's feeding this way. This is going to make sense in a minute. So let's drop our bobbin out. Now we can simply use our awl, push that up, We've got a little window here, push that out, there's a bobbin, okay? So with this, if we think about it, the bobbin is going to be pulled this way. So therefore, we want the bobbin to feed that way, basically counterclockwise. So let's drop that down in, there we go, and let's pull this thread down. Look at that, it popped right in that hole. It's literally that easy. Let's snap that back in, let's pull out a little thread, the only step left, Let's bring that through our plate, close our door, our bobbin is changed. How easy is that? A few last details. Remember I said we had slots for our Allen wrenches? Isn't that cool? Size specific too. Right there, that's our bobbin winder. Now, the machine comes with a guide, spring loaded, and I love this. I've got it loosened right here because now I can extend it, tighten it there, and I can open it up left or right, and right on that end is a roller makes it very easy. Also, maintenance. We're going to drop some grease and some oil in this. Look to our owner's manual for a good guide on that. Last point. This is going to sew up to three quarters of an inch. I wouldn't sew any more than that. That's going to tear up our timing and it's going to void our warranty. But three quarters of an inch, that's about four eight to nines back to back and it's going to do it. This is a great machine. Well, I hope this is a good overview of the Cub. For those of us who are new at sewing, it's the perfect route. Easy to sew with and easy to maintain. If we're a pro, let's add durability onto that list. Thank you, Weaver. That's exactly what we need in our shop. I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.